So hmm. let's do AEW now. Yeah. What was their rating? Uh, Eight hundred seventy thousand. Oh Eight seventy. Their, their lowest in, a, in like a long time. What well, was the lowest in the in the key demo in a long time? But yeah. Eight hundred seventy thousand. No, I got the uh, th- thanks to the old uh, WrestleNomics here. I got all the stuff. So yeah, it was eight. What do you think? Five bucks a month. For- do you have yeah. the minute by minutes? I do. Show, well, me, I show me that last. Show me the, the the main event. Okay, so I'll start you from the beginning so you can understand how, how the pattern or whatever. So the beginning live promo and Dax versus uh Danielson got a million thirty, one million thirty thousand. Mm-hmm. Okay, for the next segment with uh, Harwood and Danielson and the Ricky Starks promo, it dropped to eight eight hundred seventy seven thousand. Dropped oh, again man. to eight sixty nine for this uh, Gar- Garcia Hager Claudio promo, AR Fox versus Samoa Joe and a Wardlow angle, eight hundred sixty nine thousand. Goes up to eight eighty nine for the MJF Regal promo. Uh, goes back down to eight sixty nine for the rest of the MJF Regal promo. Starks versus Davari, Ethan Page angle, Hader and Baker. Goes down to eight hundred thirty eight thousand for Willow Nightingale versus Anna J. Uh, Orange Cassidy and then the QT promo goes down again to 801 for Jade Cargill live promo, the acclaimed and Billy Gunn and the elite versus the death triangle. And the main event is, uh, is the show low at 792,000 with the elite versus what, death triangle. What did I tell you? Yeah. It, it basically went down you? the whole show, except a little bit up for the MJF uh, regal promo. Yeah. Cause M- MJF is a draw. Right. Like MJF is like their only draw. So the, the sh- dynamite opens up and it was not a match this time. They usually open up with a match. Right. And, so Moxley comes out for promo. So there's three, there's three certain in his life, death taxes and Moxley. He said, no one would ra- ra- wrestle him or hustle him. Moxley said, nothing has changed. He's still at the top of the food chain. And Moxley said, he does, he says and does what he wants. And the ring belongs to him. He said, there's no, not a man within a hundred miles says to come out and tell him any different. Hangman page comes out. Okay. So I guess there was somebody come out and tell him something different page in the ring when face to face. Are you sure you want to do this man for what happened last time? Moxley has to go, Oh, I'm sorry. Do you not remember? And then page punched him. In the face. That was a good looking punch. Because yeah. it looked like it punched him right in the face. He may have like lit him up with that because that, that was a really good one. So and then they, they brawled, the referees come out and everything. So it's just like, you know, it's, it's just a brawl. And yeah. It's like, you know, they didn't have a verbal exchange or anything. They just started fighting each other, right? Um, what do you think is going on? I thought this was a great pull apart. Uh there was a part there where Moxley wiped out, ate it, and I thought he was hurt. Oh, he um, fell off the stage. Yeah, it's very yeah, but, hard. But, the, but it was very clumsy and chaotic, which was yeah. good. Right, yeah. It's very hard to take Paige seriously when he comes out in tassels <clears throat> and fringes on the jeans. Yeah. You know, like a go-go dancer when he power walks. Right. Just <laughs> brutal. Millennial cowboy. No drugstore cowboy. <laughs> All right, so next is uh, Dax and Brian Danielson. Um, um, you know, these guys, this was a highlight for because these guys are good workers, they're going to have a good match. And basically, you know, they went back and forth, and Danielson applied the label. I can get the submission 14 minutes, but like, but I'm, you know, and then after the match, Hardwood T's blowing off Daniel's hand, Daniels's handshake, and turned around and shook his hand and hugged him. All right? I'm going, you know, I, bro, I've asked this for, for a few weeks now. What What's the storyline here with, with Dax Hardwood? They're just uh, good having- wrestlers looking for good competition. And and it's just like these matches are cold. Like why? Yeah. Where was the backstory to this match? Why why were they wrestling? And my question is: Is it are they wrestling just because Dax Harwood wants to have a good match? Because that's that's basically been why they like they've been going on Twitter and talking like like Dax wants his legacy and so. But, but these these matches have no storylines, right? So it's just very difficult for me. Like, bro, it's very difficult for me. You know, at fifty five years old, to get into matches just because they're good matches. I like storylines. Yeah, I don't care who it is. I've seen these. I've been in this business for 28 years, you know, and I, I I know what good work is. I've seen good work. I've seen enough of it. I want stories, you know. What, yeah. what do you think of this, Conan? Yeah, it was a cold match, you know, so it had no heat. Right. But it was a good match. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Is there more to say to it than that? No. Not really, right? No. So Ricky Starks is interviewed backstage by Tony Schiavone. And he had like a minute here, and he basically said he's announced he would enter the Dynamite Diamond Battle Royal. And he's coming for everything that MJF has. I don't know. I mean, I, I have no clue why that why this guy is, is they're they're positioning him for the, for MJF's first opponent because he's like if this was a UFC, he'd be ranked like number sixteen or seventeen. I thought would, you like you that, Conan? what like like if for, if this was the UFC, where would Ricky Starks be ranked in like for, for in the contenders? Yeah, I don't. I, I wouldn't even have him in the top ten. Well, no, I mean, right he's now. had big wins recently, right? So has he? You know, yeah, he beat uh, 
uh, what was his old partner? Oh, um, yeah, well, yeah, well, be, well, before he's beating, he's just getting wins over guys in cold matches like tournaments. He is, yeah, but I mean, that's that's how yeah. they determine on there with their rankings and whatnot. He's got the wins, so he's up for a shot when he wins okay, the so battle royal. Right, so we go backstage and Hangman Page and Moxley have another pull apart. This is good. Like I said, these pull aparts were not that bad because um, they're very chaotic. And it didn't look like anybody was wor- like the, the less you look like you're working in these, the the, the better they are, right? Uh, so then they go back to um, uh, Daniel, the, the Jericho Appreciation Society without Jericho is doing a sit down that looked like in a a, a, a garage. Cody, what is in this set? They just had some like steel chairs and a brick in a yeah, garage. Yeah, I had no clue like, where they were. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> so. Uh, Hager tossed Cad, Cass, uh, Claudio a hat and said he could wear it once he has to join the Jericho Appreciation Society because I guess they're having a match and if he loses, he has got, he's got to join. Yeah. Castagnoli got up and said he's sick of sit down interviews and all of it and stormed off. <laughs> and I would like to, like, like the, the critics of Claudio Castagnoli would say to you, dude, you need to say, stay there, sit and talk because this, this is what you're not good at. But basically, he got up and said, I don't like doing these. Mm-hmm, <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so Garcia said he would team with Hager to face Castagnoli, Castagnoli and, U- and Yuta. And Yuta agreed to the match, but said Garcia needed to put the Ring of Honor pure titles on the line and Ring of Honor final battle. So this is all just Ring um, of Honor and everything. So I don't yeah. care. That pay per view um, will be in this month, actually. Yeah. Any comment, Conan? Um, yeah. I mean, they, for whatever reason, they keep talking about the stupid hat, which I think is dumb. Uh, Utah, the. They're all in on him. He's, there's nothing tough or menacing about him. Daniel Garcia, you know, they're all behind him. I'm not into him either. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So next is uh, um, Samoa Joe against this guy, A.R. Fox, who they signed. Yeah. And like everybody's all, A.R. Fox just signed. And now A.R. Fox got a TNT championship match. But, bro, A.R. AR Fox just is, is like as indie as can be. Hmm. Like the kid looks decent. He's got a good body. They build him as 188 pounds. I don't know why they do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but his his strikes look very sissy-ish. Like, he doesn't look like he can hurt you at all. Like, his punches look very weak. And it was a shame that Joe, Joe had to sell, like, some of these. Because the kid was, like, punching him for a comeback. And Joe had to sell some weak stuff. But Joe's stuff looked way more vicious than this other kid's did. But he did a couple. He did a 450 splash. And it's a acrobatic thing where he flipped over the top rope and landed on his feet outside and stuff. But yeah. Like, uh, this, this is where, I mean. This kid, this kid's offense was way too weak for me to tell you that this went eight minutes and ten seconds to Joe. Wayne. He's actually uh, been around fifteen years. Di, he's thirty-five. Has he really? Yeah. This kid yeah. These are, he learned uh, how to throw punches. CZW, you know? FIP, you know, uh, Dragon Gate, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, what do you think is going on? Very talented guy, um, and uh, you know, he just seems like another guy that gets into the company, has a good match. Tony gets a hard on for him, signs him beats him and you never see him again <laughs> yeah it's about i mean in a nutshell pretty much right yeah um so uh so after the match uh joe took some mic and bosey he's the one true king of television warlow comes to the big screen and mock joe for the slogan and said it's almost as lame as the award show name that you accuse him of coming up with that was and wardlow great. said he hopes joe is enjoying himself playing the role because he's come for what's his and wardlow said it's not joe's world it's warzel's world this was another awkward out because you know how, like, when these segments end, they just immediately cut away with, with no time. They, they, they kind of kept the camera, like, way too long here. Where both guys were just standing, like, they showed, they showed Wardlow on the screen. He was he was done. Joe was done. They go back and show Wardlow. He's still done. And they show Joe's, like, this one, like, the, the, the way they cut out too early, they stayed too long on this. I thought I thought that was entertaining. Uh, yeah, here's a message for Wardlow. Um, yeah. Ward Joe yeah. is mega Joe Joe. But so is Wardlow's world. <laughs> right. Yeah. He, this is not a good promo for Wardlow, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, and they showed a, vin- a vignette of Powerhouse Hobbs walking the streets of Oakland. He passed some guys who were gambling. They were scared. So. <laughs> yeah, that was too quick to mean anything. <laughs> right. I didn't even know what it, what, what, what it was supposed to mean, you know? Uh, so Regal comes out. He introduces MJF. Bro, this – okay. This segment, I believe – okay, as, as I'm talking – I think this was 17 minutes. Hmm. Okay. MJF gets on the mic. And bro, I'm not. I mean, he he talked forever, and like he was just he was bringing up everything, talking about fake tough guys. Eddie Kingston called Ricky Starks a fake tough guy. Called Brian Danielson the the midest of the mid fake wrestlers. I actually like that line. Uh, he said he addressed the locker room. Said they they won't know what it's like to be on top while he's around. 
said he'll be a champion until the bidding war of 2024. Um, he praises the right con that Khan pays up. He said he wasn't talking about Khan. He said he wasn't talking about Tony. Yeah. He saw his, his jolly old Saint Nick and my other boy, the game trips. So he's like playing that in this angle. Yeah, you know? sure. I don't think that that's a good look for the show, to be honest with you. That MJ constantly talking about. Yeah, yeah he just wants to are, leave. He wants to leave for the big time. It seems like you know, and that's that what it's making it sound like. And, and right. their numbers are in good right now, so it's not working. Yeah. So, so MJ. So I don't know what, what, why they thought this would work. Okay. MJF told Regal that he nearly forgot something. And then MJF pulled the brass knuckles out of his pocket and and, and a shut that up. Champ broke out. MJF told Regal that without the brass knuckles, none of this would have been possible. And MJF said Regal loves the business, encouraged the fans to, to give it up for him. He walked behind him and said, "For the bottom of my heart," and then hit Regal from behind with the brass knuckles and laid him out. And the announcers went crazy. Oh my god! And they brought the stretcher down and stuff. This was supposed to be heat, but I don't know why they thought this would be heat because Regal just turned on Moxley. Yeah, and and he looks stupid here because when the guy put the brass knuckles on and walked behind him, they, was it just me or did you know he was going to go to hit him in the back like he was going to punch him in the back? Yeah, of course. Like that, I thought I thought it was obvious what he was going to do. So what 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 do you what do you think, Conan? I just think Regal's been underutilized. He's very very talented, and between the Combat Club and Danielson wanting nobody to hit him and with MJF, I think he's been underutilized. He doesn't mean anything. Everybody wants to do something with him, but he hasn't really given anybody the rub. I love MJF's promos, 90% of them. This was not one of them. This was too, 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 too long, dragged way right. too long, was not funny, was not good, was kind of tacky. And you've got to watch out, bro, because these long promos like this will bring, you know, people will turn on you. Well, yeah. there's a lot of speculation that Regal's leaving, and this was the way to write him off. Uh, Meltzer has reported that he signed th for three years, but that there's something going on behind the scenes that Meltzer cannot report. But Fightful is reporting that Regal only signed for nine months. So I think either way, he's he's on his way out. I, I said to you guys a couple of months ago on here that I, I had heard from uh, a source that Regal was looking for ways out of his contract to go back and work with Hunter. And I think that's what we're finally seeing here. He's, pro he's probably either left now or he's they're, they're writing him out. He's on his way out. I'd like to see some. I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to know if the dirt sheets are reporting that in hopes that it happens, so they can look like they're right, or if they actually have any inside knowledge of whether he's leaving or not. I, I did. I did have a real source that told me that. So, all right. So Rick, Ricky Starks against Ari Davari. Um, well, Ricky Starks makes his entrance and uh, Stokely Hathaway and we're interrupted with, with Ethan Page. <laughs> Stokely Stokely Hathaway dresses like like a guy that doesn't have any money. <laughs> you notice that? Yeah, and his character is not. He's supposed to be the opposite. He's supposed to be like a right. big, big timer and all that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Paige. So Matt Hardy cut in front of them and played to the crowd. And Paige said they own Hardy and said Hardy will be holding one of the dynamite diamond ring. And Hardy headed to the back and flicked them off when he left. As Paige cut a promo on Starks, then Ari Davari attacked him before the match, and Ricky Starks turned around and beat him in thirty seconds. And I don't, I don't I mean, bro. If they wonder why they're doing eight under nine hundred thousand people. You're, you're, you're putting Ricky Starks against Ari Davari on the show, and like nobody who wants to watch that. Yeah, like, nobody. You know, no, no doubt in the result either. Right. Um. Did, did you get any comment on this, Conan? Yeah, at least it was booked properly. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamie Hader, Britt Baker, Rebel were interviewing the backstage area, and B Baker brought up the sit down interview with Soraya, and Hader suggested that Giovanni conduct the sit down interview with her, and that was the, the base of the. Bro, just, can anybody promo. do a promo <laughs> besides Britt? Mm. I. I mean, I don't know. You know. I mean, she seems to. It's getting to the point where she's she's hogging all the mic time, and none of the other girls are getting over because of it. You know. Yeah. Uh, so we so we do Anna Jay versus Willow Nightingale, and uh, speaking of reasons that uh, they're doing under eight hundred thousand. Yeah, and so Willow Nightingale beats her in seven minutes and thirty seconds. This is a mediocre match. Terrible. But the heel do were about to leave when when, uh, when Ruby Soho came out, and she entered behind Mello and took her down and or take Connie with Tay Mello, whatever her name is. Yeah, and Jay Return was taken out by by Soho. And Melo tried to leave, but Soho caught her on the ramp and headbutted her. And so Soho's hometown crowd chanted "Welcome home," and then she hit Destination Unknown on the stage. Oh, so that's why they brought her out because that was her hometown. <clears throat> yeah, like, I was wondering what the purpose of this was. Yeah, that was mostly it. Plus, that she was. Like, ready they weren't getting any heat on Willow Nightingale or nothing. But what? Why would the? Why would she come out and like? I don't. Did, does Soho have heat from before? No, she something? was. She was out with a broken nose. Well, who broke her nose? Um, I believe it was uh, Sammy and Tay in that spot in the on the pay per view. Oh, is that what it was? Okay, yeah. maybe, okay. So she was mad at Tay for breaking her nose. Yeah, there you go. All right. <laughs> so, all right. Orange Cassidy 
is is not you got any comment on this match, Conan, by the way? Yeah, I think Anna J is still very green. They mm-hmm. put her in a match too long. Willow Nightingale's mm-hmm. gotten a little bit better, but she's not that much better. And right. I don't even know why this match existed. Right. <laughs> so you know how we talk about um what do you call it? Uh how you know you want these uh you want these backstage promos to hype up Rampage, right? So Shivani interviews Orange Cassidy and QT Marshall in the backstage area in order that they agree to no physicality. Marshall asks for a shot at the All Atlantic Cassidy Championship, and Cassidy medium cuts him off and says, Yeah, you got the match. The Marshall asked, Do you want to be a lumberjack match for Rampage? And Cassidy quickly said, Yeah, great lumberjack match, cool, and just walks off. Right. Like you could you could not do like like even Orange Cassidy is saying, I don't care about this match either. <laughs> What did you think of this, Cody? I mean, this is Cassidy's character. Well, that's his MO, right? And he a slacker that doesn't care yeah, much about anything. Yeah. Right. So, Whatever works. <laughs> you, you would think, okay, if that's his, that's his character, let's think of a different way to hype this match. You know? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. So, uh, so Car- Jay Cargo comes out uh, with the baddies, the other two baddies. Uh-huh. Um, she said she, she got rid of the trash. They, they look good. So they're, they're dressing up a little bit more. Right, yeah, so the, one, the of baddies, one of them's red velvet since she came back. <laughs> right, so so the baddies are kind of getting it a little bit. They need to be more stylish. They're going to be, you know, hanging out with Jade Cargo, who looks like a million bucks. Right, she says she's a star of the company. She said nobody has her face or her body or aura. And Cargo said she puts asses in the seats. And there were some cheers in the crowd. And Cargo said she she wrestles for bad and had the cameras show additional baddies in the crowd. And Cargo said little bow wow was a joke. So, so he appears on the screen and said he had a lot of time in his hands. Now he's done touring. And Jade Cargo just dropped the mic and walk off, and they just cut away from the segment. <laughs> yeah, I guess they're trying to make it seem like she's she's flustered or whatever that he appeared. I I don't know. That's just my guess. Uh, I mean, this is Conan. What do you think of this? Uh, she looked great in that bikini. Yeah. And uh, she needs to get rid of Layla and the velvet cake, and they don't, <laughs> she doesn't need them. Right. Um, the she's doing with Bow Wow is not interesting. He's not over. I don't think anybody cares about him except whatever fans he has left. And they're doing and, nothing yeah. to make it interesting, right? And he's not say anything I, interesting. He's, and they're underutilizing. Kind of right. They're underutilizing her, right? <clears throat> um. So backstage, Billy Gunn played drill instructor while the acclaimed and, and Bowens uh, were acting like they're like you know what was what's this was Full Metal cool. Jack. Not stupid. This was very corny. Uh, they will speak on Rampage, and then so they they cut this promo to says they'll be speaking again on Rampage. That was right. what the promo was, and they did the scissoring at the end. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> so they can probably get no ma- the backstage segments that they, they should just. D- 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 there's no point even doing these. Did they get nothing out of them? There's no character development. They did, and everybody says the same thing as this is doing. So the elite against the what you call it's in the best of seven series down two to one. Um, I watched this. Uh, just just way too many super kicks and not selling them enough, and just you know. But th- there was a good spot there where Kenny was fighting back one one against two. And that looked really good. Like, Kenny actually throws a pretty good punch. I don't know why he doesn't do it more often. All these guys are doing the thing. Like, some of these guys throw good punches. Like, they should do it. They, they, they look better. But, like, they do get the punches. Like, the Bucks throw good punches. Kenny throws good punches. And the, the punches look far better than the, than the forums. They, they do. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, so the, the what's his name goes up. Pack goes up for the broken arrow. He takes way too much time on top of the the the, uh, the ropes when he goes for these moves. Like he's like a, just balancing himself. And he did the thing and he ran right into Matt's. Uh, Matt put his knees up and they pinned him one two three. Right. So that and that, and that was the show basically. Uh, what did you think of this, Conan? I thought the thing with Matt was weird and bad. Which which spot? <clears throat> when Matt Hardy came out. Oh yeah, the, the Matt Hardy. Yeah yeah. Wait, he Matt Hardy came out in this match. He came out in that one or the match before. No, nah, he's saying the one earlier. No, he came out for the, 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 the spot with, with Ethan Page and right. know, for, for no yeah. reason. Right. Yeah. But this was uh um Joe, tell Conan the rating of this last segment. Seven hundred and ninety two thousand. What did it start at? The show started at a million No, no, uh, what did the segment start? The last quarter what oh, uh eight eight oh one, so they lost nine thousand. Uh, the, the, so the loss, yeah. What 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 I what I I made a bold statement that these six man matches would would lose viewers, and there's another week they lost viewers. So I'm 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 sticking to you this. Right? Well, there's a <clears throat> there's a report from PW Insider I wanted to read you guys. It says um, 
Fans watching in person gave very muted responses to both teams as they entered the arena and didn't change up much throughout the match. The elite got a mix of cheers and boos at times with, quote, people seeming apathetic, end quote, towards the trio, while Death Triangle was left with no reaction. Specifically, the conclusion where several false finishes and big moves occurred before a surprise roll-up in was said to have left the crowd very flat. So it seems like the live crowd wasn't into it either. Yeah, because this, this was not the type of finish you would, you would think you'd see in a, in, a, in a match like this, where the they do with all the false finishes. The, the other thing, too, Kenny Omega had a uh, he did an interview a while back talk about how he needed to tone it down a little bit because he's had a lot of injuries bro did you see that movie took from pack off the top rope the falcon arrow into, into the i'm like jeez bro if you keep picking bumps like that you're gonna keep getting hurt yeah. you know so i don't but uh there's an underwhelming show to me to be honest with you so that's what do you think conan yeah exactly very underwhelming yeah all right so that's been our AEW review enjoy the rest of the show boom <laughs>